Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we are going to program and code our animal record screen. We're going to be able to record both video and record sound. In the previous video, we actually designed this screen completely. For this app and this screen specifically, for Animal Record screen specifically, we're not going to be able to use the emulator to actually test our app when we're done. We are using it right now for the design and testing some of the features as we start to code it, but we cannot record video in the emulator and we cannot record sound in the emulator. So you will need to use your phone or tablet to actually test the final app that we're making in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So we need to program our home button. We need to record our record video button. You can also see there's a video player hidden here. I can actually turn that on. So what we're gonna do is when someone records video, after they record the video, we're gonna put that video inside this video player so they can actually play it. So that's why this right here is turned. We have this button record sound and you can see underneath that we have a horizontal arrangement called audio playback button. And we have these three guys in here, but if I click on my horizontal arrangement, you can, this is also off. And then what will happen is you can record the sound and we, and after you're done recording, we're going to turn this on. That way you can see these three buttons here and play the sound that you actually just recorded. I'm going to turn this back off. Now there's one thing that might be bothering you and you can see here it looks perfectly centered, but in our design, like it's kind of off. So why is it off? Well, back in design, back when we were designing the screen on the animal record screen, we actually, on the animal record properties, we turned on scrollable. So if you make something scrollable, if you think about it, there, there is no fill parent for width because you can continue to scroll, 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 scroll. So it makes it look weird. It off centers it because you're saying, I want to make this thing scrollable. Well, if they can scroll, you cannot feel the parent because it's infinite. So if I simply turn scrollable off, you can see now it centers everything. But if I turn it back on, I can continue to scroll right on the screen. It's not going to center everything. So just make sure that is one of the design flaws that you might come run into. All right, so let's jump into actually coding. Let's start off with our basics. Getting home and when someone presses the back button, pretty straightforward. And we're gonna go to our button, our image home, we'll pull out this clickable. And to go to any screen, we need control. So I'm gonna click on control from the built-in blocks. I'm gonna scroll down and we're gonna look for this block right here. Open another screen with screen name. I'm going to click on text. I'm gonna pull this and put this in here. I'm gonna type screen one. And that's gonna take me home. But remember we like to talk, so I'm gonna do text-to-speech. I'm gonna put text-to-speech up there. I'm gonna to go to text, built-in blocks, pull in a text block, and say going home. Now, same thing for the back button. So when someone on the animal record screen presses back, which is this right here, we want to go home. I'm gonna click on animal record. You can see the first block says back press and I want to do these two things exactly the same. So I can right click and do duplicate and right click and push duplicate and there we go. Well something I've mentioned before is the dry principle. Do not repeat yourself. Well I'm repeating myself here. I just duplicate literally. Whenever you are repeating yourself you want to make a procedure. I'm going to make a procedure so we do not repeat ourselves. Call it go home. And what we're gonna do is pull this and put that there. And I'm gonna pull this out and delete that. Now I can do procedures, go home, procedures, go home. So let's test these out. Let's see if it goes home. I did open another screen with screen name going to that screen, but we're actually not opening a screen. We should do close screen. So I'm going to, you could do it this way, but if you go back to control, again, there's a bunch of ways to do it. I can simply select close screen. 
Let me show you that works. So first, let's do it this way. Open another screen with screen name. If I click on home. Going home. Welcome to Jamie Dance Amazing Animal Park app. Now I click on record animals. Let's record some animal sounds and videos. If I pull this out and put close here, and I click on the home button. Going home. Welcome to Jamie Dance Amazing Animal Park app. Let's record some animal sounds and videos. So you can see there's multiple ways to do um, the same thing in programming. I'm just gonna leave the close screen. So now let's work with recording video. In record video, someone will press this button. You see nothing happens now. When someone presses this, we're going to start recording using what we added in the design, our camcorder. After we're done recording, we're gonna put the video they recorded into their video player here and start playing that video. So let's do that. So someone's first going to, remember programming is event driven. So the event that is happening is when someone touches this image. So I'm going to button record video. The brown blocks are my events, the one I'm looking for. I, there is a bunch of ways you can do it, but you can see I'm doing click, well, I'll click. So when someone touches this button, what do we want to do? We want to launch the camcorder and start recording. So I'm going to click on camcorder and you can see here's the block that you have. You have an event called after recording and you have a procedure or action called record video and you just simply have the camcorder block. I'm going to pull this out, record video. What this block does is it, the camcorder is actually not a part of our app. It's a part of your phone or your tablet. Most phones and tablets have the functionality built into it if it has a camera to record video and sound. So this is saying, hey, go to your default phone or app camcorder and simply record the video. When you come back, we want to get that video and use it. This is recording the actual starting to record the video. So let's just see, again, this is not going to work. It's gonna give you an example of what, what it will look like, um, but this is actually not gonna work with an emulator. You need to test it in a tablet. This is what the emulator shows you of how it could work. So when I press this, so that's like some video, an example. If I press this, you see it really doesn't do anything because it's an emulator, but I can press record. Supposedly it is recording as an imaginary emulator. When I press stop, I can play it back and you can see the camera has stopped. That doesn't work. The camcorder did not record a clip. Again, if I do it again and I just record and I press stop and I press yes, give me that video. Again, the camcorder did not return a clip. That's why we cannot test this part of our app in the emulator. It's okay to test building it, but it's really best if you use a tablet and do connect and you do the AI companion, not the emulator. But we can see it's actually working. It's launching the camcorder. Um, I will now show you how it actually looks on a tablet. So I'm going to do reset connection and I'm going to do connect. I'm going to do AI companion. That's going to bring this up and on my tablet, on my tablet, I have the MIT App Inventor Companion. I'm going to select scan and I'm now connecting live and you can see it says fail to connect. So let's try that again. I'm going to do reset connection, AI companion. I'm going to do scan code on my tablet and there you go. It's connecting to my tablet. I'm going to show you the live testing on my tablet versus using the emulator because again, we cannot record video. We cannot record video using the emulator. So since in this app, we cannot test the record using the emulator, I've connected my phone and I'm casting it using Let's View. So this is my phone and I can actually select record. And you can see now you see me 
And if I wanted to flip this, well, let's just record my son's little Lego battle here. You can see it is recording. And then I'm gonna press stop. I can play back that recording. And then I can click okay to say I'm done. Now what happened? I recorded something, but did I code where I wanted to do with that? I didn't. So we added this little video player here that after someone's done recording, we want to put the clip into this video player and start playing. So let's go ahead and code that and then retest. We see this part is working. We were recording video, but we need to now do something with that video. So I'm gonna go back to camcorder and you can see they have this event block. After we're recording, there's a clip. So I'm gonna pull this out. So after we're done recording, what would we wanna do is we wanna put this clip into this video player and then actually play that video. So I'm going to do video player. I want to actually, let's just show you. This is my video player, it is hidden and I need to put the video clip recorded into the source. Well, remember in App Inventor, any of these properties can be changed in code. Properties are the green blocks that you're gonna see. So I'm gonna to need to first put the video into here. I'm going to need to show, unhide this video player, and I also need to play the video. So I'm going to come here. Let's just comment our code so we know what we're doing. We do add a comment. What I'm gonna say is after the video is recorded, I'm gonna say one, I wanna speak a random message to the user, which we're gonna do a little bit later. I'm gonna put the recorded video in the video player. Three, I'm gonna show the video player. Four, I'm gonna start the video player to play the video. So these are the steps. And it's always great to comment your code that we're going to do. Focus on one right now. I want to speak a random message. And we're going to do this because in your create performance task for the AP Computer Science Principles exam, you're going to have to work with list. We're going to make a message list that's going to have a bunch of different sayings. And we're simply going to pull a random saying from that list. So to do that, we're going to need a variable. So let's click on variables, pull out a global variable. And I'm just going to call it messages. I need to make a list. So I'm going to go to list call right here, make a list. And I'm going to fill in two blocks. First message I might say is great recording. Second message I might say is that was amazing recording. And let's say I wanted to add three more, but I only have two spots. Well, remember in App Inventor, anytime you see this little blue settings box, you can click it and you can modify this block. So if I want to have three more things, I can simply drag three more items to the right. And then I can simply fill those in with text. And for number three, the message that I'll say, you are a great quarter. Four, what I'm gonna do is, wow, that's a, that's a one of a kind recording. Let's be more specific, animal recording. And the last one, let's just say, you are so creative with that recording. So this is like extra. We have a bunch of messages in a list, and we're again, we're using a list because you're gonna have to do that on your create performance task. And we want to simply pick a random message from this list. So I'm just gonna make a procedure, and procedures are also on the AP create performance task. Pull out this procedure, and I'm gonna say play message after recording. And all I'm gonna do in here is simply speak a random message from this. So this is gonna be very simple. Scroll down, I'm gonna click on text-to-speech. I'm gonna pull in speak. I wanna pick a random item from this list. So if it's list, I need to go back to list, scroll up, go to list. And these are all the things I can do with list. Again, you're gonna to need to do this on your create performance task. Well, you can see right here, pick a random item from the list. I'm gonna pull this, connect that. Well, what list do I wanna pull from is my messages list. So I can go to variables and get the variable. Since it's a global variable, it will find it as messages. Or 
again, you can do simply mouse over your global variable to get or set it. And I'm gonna get it. So just to comment this, even though we don't need to, I'm gonna say play a random message from our messages after a user records video or sound. We got a nice little user-friendly function that's gonna complement the user. Step one is done. For step one, we're going to create, for step one, step one is done. Now let's go to step two, the meat of this. Put the recording in the video player. The recording is actually right here, this clip. So I need to go to the video player and I wanna update the source. So I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna find source. I'm gonna move this over some and let's zoom out a little bit. So I'm gonna put this clip, I'm mousing over this, I cannot click on it. If I click on it, it's gonna minimize the block. I'm gonna mouse over clip, I'm gonna put this clip and put it inside there. That's step two, put the recorded video into the player. Now we need to show the player. Again, over here on the right side, it is hidden. So I'm gonna click back on video player. We have to find the properties. Properties are down here, our green blocks. Let's look here, the video player. The reason it's invisible is because my visible property is off. If I turn this on, it will show. If I turn it off, it hides. So it's either true or false. Is this visible? True, it will show. False, it will not. Go to blocks, go back to video player. I'm looking for my visible property, see it here. I wanna get what the current visible property is of the video player, which I know it's false, so you can see that here. Or I can set what the visible property is for my video player, which is I want to turn it to true. So I'm gonna pull out set. I'm gonna paste that here. Again, I said true or false. True or false deals with logic. So I'm gonna come up here to logic. I'm gonna pull in true. That is going to turn my video player on after we're done recording. So step three is done. Now I wanna start the video to play. So I'm gonna go back to video player and you can see right here, I have my little event or procedure blocks. I have my action or procedure blocks called start. I'm just going to say start. Now you can see my screen has died, so I'm gonna unlock that. All right, so we have recording video. We're gonna start the camcorder. We're gonna speak a random message. We're gonna put the video recorded into the player. We're gonna show the player, and then we're actually gonna start the video. Let's see if this works. So I'm gonna press on my phone, record. You can see it's showing that way. If I flip it around, it's showing me. Well, let's say I want to record my son's Legos again. I'm going to press record. It is currently recording. I'm going to press stop. I'm going to click OK to confirm that I want this recording. And then what happened? You can see this is the video. The whole screen is black. I'm going to press play. And what has happened is this has taken over my entire screen. So we gotta kinda limit this little video player. And this is one of the quirks on Affinator. So right now it's just making it super big because my other stuff is super big. So I'm gonna change this height to something like 150. And I'll make the width, let's just say fill parent so we can see what happens. So let's go ahead and retry this. Visible is on. Let's see, so that's how it will look. I think that's okay. So we're restricting these two that way. It doesn't take over our cold screen. So this time I'm just gonna record myself, testing that this works. I'm gonna click okay. You can see the little black box shows up and if I press play, And you can see it shows up. That is a little bit weird. We probably let's make it a little bit better. 
So let's make this width, let's say 200 by that. Let's try it one more time. So this is our video. Testing, 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 record, click OK. There's a little box for us. I click play. So you can see our app actually works. In the next video, we will work on how to record audio. For now, we are done.